Hello, everyone, and welcome to our program tonight. My name is Lee Pfeffer, and I am the Manager of Museum Experience here at the GLBT Historical Society, and I thank you for joining us tonight. I want to acknowledge by I want to start by acknowledging that the GLBT Historical Society is based on Ohlone tribal land. I invite any indigenous folks with us today to make themselves visible in the chat and be recognized as we honor the contemporary and ancestral lives of America's indigenous peoples. This event is going to be recorded and posted to our YouTube channel and our website. If you're watching along live, we welcome your active participation in the chat and encourage you to post comments, observations, and questions for our participants. We'll also be having a Q&A session near the end. Before I turn it over to our hosts for this evening, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the society and the work that we do. Founded in 1985, the GLBT Historical Society is recognized internationally as a leader in the field of LGBTQ public history. Our mission is to collect, preserve, exhibit, and make accessible to the public knowledge and, knowledge and materials to support and promote understanding of LGBTQ history, culture, and arts in all their diversity. Our operations are centered around two different sites in San Francisco. We have the museum located at the, in the heart of the San Francisco's Castro since 2011, and we are opening up to the public on June 1st. So put that in your calendars. And we also have the Dr. John P. DeCecco Archives and Research Center in the Mid Market District. Please check out our growing array of exhibitions, events, and archival resources online on our website at glbthistory.org. You can also check out some of our other events that we'll be doing here. I'll put a little banner up, glbthistory.org slash events. I would also like to thank all of our members and donors who really make our work possible. If you're not already a card carrying member of the GLBT Historical Society, I invite you to consider joining today. Members get a variety of cool perks, including a 20% discount on purchases of swag from our online store, access to special members only events. And when the museum opens, opens up again, you get free access to the museum with a guest. So you can learn more about how to become a member and other ways to give to support the society by visiting GL glbthistory.org slash memberships or glbthistory.org slash join dash give. Uh, this tonight is our inaugural program in our brand new program series called Curiosity Corner, which is basically going to be a wonderful LGBTQ materials show and tell with our wonderful uh, registrar and curatorial specialist, Ramon Silvestri, who is an expert in material, cultural stu material culture studies. He previously was a visiting fellow at the Smithsonian's National Museum of, National History, of Natural History and has published in many national and international professional journals, including the Smithsonian Institution Scholarly Press. He holds a PhD in anthropology and a master's degree in curatorial and museum studies from the University of Arizona School of Anthropology. He's conducted fieldwork and museum collections acquisitions among the Kalinga and Ifuogo tribes in Northern Philippines, the Iban in Indonesia, and the Dayak in Borneo. And then tonight we have as our guest that Ramon will be speaking to, Daniel Nicoletta. He's a freelance photographer who began his career in 1975 as an intern to Crawford Barton and then the staff photographer for The Advocate. Nicola also, Nicoletta also worked in Harvey Milk's camera store in the heart of the Castro district and was involved in Milk's victorious election in 1977. His photographic body of work maps his long romance with San Francisco and its people, especially the LGBTQ community. Nicoletta's work has been featured in books, periodicals, films, and collections, including the New York Public Library's Wallach and Berg collections and the Bancroft collection at the University of California, Berkeley. The first solo book of Nicoletta's work, LGBT San Francisco, the Daniel Nicoletta Pho Photographs, was released by Real Art Press in 2017, and you can get it online at our bookshop page. So I'm gonna bring our wonderful hosts up today and we will get started in showcasing some really fun objects from our archives dealing with Harvey Milk. Words. Hello to the two of you. <laughs> we are so excited to be in tonight. <laughs> yes, thank you for coming. Uh, 
I'm going to drop off. Uh, if you don't know what the what the sunglasses were, those are from our <laughs> one of our images uh, of yeah. Harvey. And so I will let you two run the show. We love you. We, we, well, we thank you. Your, your Zoom chips. Thanks for coming. <laughs> so first and foremost, my name is Ramon Silvestri, and I am so excited to be on our first inaugural show for Curiosity Corner. Uh, I would like to thank you all for joining us tonight. And of course, our very special guest, um, Daniel Nicoletta. A quick and further shout out to my colleague and tonight's program tech guru who you just met, um, Lee Pfeffer, along with Mark Sochuk, our communications manager editor for a social media presence for online programs such as this along with the very supportive staff that makes my tenure here at the Historical Society an exciting, at times, hysterical experience. Having worked in the museum environment for the last three decades, and I know that dates me, the Historical Society's collection has been the most intriguing art and artifact collection I have worked with. And believe me when I say, never a dull moment. I have worked in more traditional archaeological and ethnographic collections in the past in other institu institutions, but nothing is as unique as what you might find at the Historical Society's Art and Artifact Collection, far from other more traditional museum collections and acquisitions that you might find. Which sort of pushed me to this idea at tonight's inaugural feature, a quarterly program series we call Curiosity Corner is built upon the concept of a traditional cabinet of curiosities popularized during Victorian England, which at times turned out to be, to be then the startup museum, which today would end up to be museums and famous with famous noble names or royal family names like the Victoria Albert Museum in London or the Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford. So I, dig I, I digress. Long story short, as I have a tendency to be long-winded, the, query, the Curiosity Corner series, I need to practice that one, will be showing off rarely, ob rarely seen objects with a special focus on this art and artifact collection and other special collections that might be purely objects of art and ephemera, <clears throat> like the Harvey Milk collection. So let me run through quickly what you might find in this special art and artifact collection, which is currently an online resource database on our website that we had recently inventoried through a generous San Francisco City Heritage Preservation Grant and continue to grow along with your contributions and your financial support that we encourage. And I apologize, that was a plug. Um, the art and artifact collection is an ever-growing most intriguing and sometimes outright ridiculous, of course, that's my bias, collection of objects you will go through and experience. You check our website and be surprised or mesmerized or shocked. Yes, we do collect unusual things. You could possibly come across tiaras, matchbooks, pins, leather vests, costumes, Sylvester the Disco Divas lipstick, theater props, what I call quote unquote adult toys, an occasional leather whip, a coronation leather band that reads Mr. International Leather, a collection of what our archivists call quote unquote erotica. You can all figure out that, uh, you can figure that all out in layman's terms, what that means. And yes, we have it all. So bringing you all back, to our first installment, tonight's program, which focuses on materials associated with Harvey Milk, whose birthday is coming up on May 22nd, celebrated as Harvey Milk Day here in San Francisco. Our selections of photographs that Daniel, Nicolette, and I, and objects show a fascinating, unexpected dimension of Harvey Milk. We have all seen the iconic images during his campaigns for political office, and at gay freedom pride events. But these selections demonstrate that Milk had a fun-loving, silly side to him that we should remember during this annual celebration of his life. 
I am being joined together in a privilege and a pleasure to have and introduce photographer Daniel Nicoletta, who worked at Milk's Castro, Milk's Castro Camera Shop or store in the 1970s. And I found out recently that he started working with Harvey Milk when he was 19 and a half years old. I have known Dan. He and I have crossed. He and I have crossed paths when I first got started getting involved with the historical society as early as the 1990s with Susan Stryker, our first historical society executive director, and my first exhibition installation of on Harvey Milk, dubbed Saint Harvey, which of course the Catholic Archdiocese of San Francisco all riled up and quite upset that we had called Harvey Milk a saint. Oh well, I do have to choose my battles with my church because I, I am after all what I call myself a cafeteria Catholic. I pick and choose my rules. So enough of me, without much further ado, I would like to welcome our special guest, photographer Daniel Nicoletta. Live presentation with you. We're usually schmoozing back in the back rooms of the, um, <laughs> uh, the archives, which kind of, kind of a little, sounds a little tawdry, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I also want to thank Lee Pfeffer for setting all this up and Mark Sawchuk for writing a beautiful press release. And um, well, who else am I forgetting here? Uh, Ramon, of course. So, um, and uh, I'll have other people I'm going to mention as we go forward. But uh, I also want to do an, an Indigenous people acknowledgement for my area. I'm in Oregon now. I moved here seven years ago, and I love it. It's it's just really magnificent. And uh, this is the the land of the Tikalma and the Shasta people. And so, I just want to make sure I touch ground, sacred ground with that history as we talk about a later history and uh, the intersection of the, those two things. And I think it's very important to, <clears throat> you know, acknowledge the, the ancestors that are still with us, you know. So, um, and then, uh, yeah, I guess, Lee, I'm probably ready for that first slide. Leaf should be, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I love that picture. Thank you. So this is a photograph by Tom Ewer, uh, and uh, it is in the Harvey Milk Scott Smith papers at the San Francisco Library, the James C. Hormel uh, LGBT collection that's also known as the Harvey Milk and Scott Smith collection. Uh, <clears throat> Tom was inner circle friend of Harvey's. He was actually uh, uh, actor who was in the road company of, of Hair, the Broadway play that Tom O'Horgan uh, directed and Harvey was participant in as, uh, I don't know, he was kind of like an everyman. He was, uh, he went on tour with the company in that first tour to San Francisco. And I, I hear great stories about it being pretty wild, but I got to know Tom Muir a little bit and he was fantastic. He's a theater person like myself. Uh, he worked with puppets. Um, he worked with Sherry Lewis, and I miss him. He died of AIDS, I don't know, probably just before the cocktail, so mid-90s. <clears throat> um, and I also want to wish Harvey Milk a happy birthday. Uh, he would be 91, uh, which is a little shocking to me. Um, we're here to talk about his sense of humor and... Uh, you know, on our birthdays at Castro Camera, where I worked for three years, we would always uh, throw pies in each other's faces on our birthdays. And it was this sort of like game around, you didn't, you went to work knowing you were gonna get two pies, one from Harvey and one from Scott, but <clears throat> you didn't know at which point in the day. So you'd come to work and open the drawer and there would be the pie to, to say, uh, yeah, not yet, but soon. <laughs> so, um, I also just want to make the observation that, you know, I feel 
that Harvey uh, used humor as a survival tool because you you know you'd also often be in earshot of him saying you know uh, politics is is so hideous that you know if you don't have a sense of humor mm -hmm. about it you're doomed and you know I think he truly believed that and uh, so we laughed a lot all the time and you know comic strips were passed and jokes were told and um, it was a really fun place to work um, let's see uh, also I, I think his he uh, was you know his connection to theater comes into play which is I think obvious to most you know and he did work with Tom Horgan intimately uh, both off Broadway and on Broadway and he knew Tom when Tom had not been discovered as the, the eminent director of Hair and Jesus Christ Superstar. And Tom was pretty poor then, and Harvey wasn't. And so he would often take Tom and his uh, his friend, uh, Robert Downey Sr., our mm -hmm. Robert Downey's father, who was a filmmaker, and they, they would all go out for hamburgers and Harvey would regale we, me with these tales and he would say things like, you know, Tom Horgan had holes in his shoes in the wintertime. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to focus on the theater stuff because um, I think that's my favorite part of Harvey and his, his Elan, you know, so. Um, and, I also, think very few people, and I think very few people knew that he had that theater side of him because I didn't know until you mentioned that a few days ago. It's it's under it's under uh, explored for sure, you know. Um, and then you know also we we want to remember Craig Rodwell, who was a romantic partner of Harvey's, who was you know basically at Stonewall was part of the Gay Liberation Front, and he was essentially a militant homosexual when it was really impossible to be that. And uh, and Harvey and him lived together and Harvey would witness his partner come home beaten up by cops and, you know, or taking, getting him out of jail and that kind of stuff. And so I have to imagine for me, for me that, you know, we all think that Harvey got politicized in San Francisco, but it really, through the theater and through uh, his relationship with Craig uh, his appreciation of people like Lenny Bruce, you know, you have somebody who is really understanding that politics is theater, mm -hmm. it's politics, you know. So I think we are ready for the next slide, Lee. So this is, you know, this, was, this. <laughs> this was the, the photo uh, that, you know, kind of stimulated this whole program or one of them. And, uh, uh, it's Harvey in the camera store. It's it's taken by me. It's 1977. Uh, it's it's like there's only two frames of this on the entire roll. The roll is something else entirely. <laughs> so it's really unique. And uh, he had just been elected to the board of supervisors, and one of his constituents gave him this hat, uh, which turns on. It's battery operated, and this the red light rotates and makes this really hideous noise. And yep. the, the idea was that, you know, if you, Harvey, if you ever have trouble getting the attention of the board, this will be your, your ticket, you know. Perfect. And, that, let, me, let, let me also add that this photograph, and Daniel, Dan knows about this, was about a year and a half ago, we loaned this photograph to a major exhibit in Germany at the Bunda Kunstale in Bonn. And we sent the actual helmet and the sunglasses plus Dan's photograph for this exhibition, which actually ran for six months in Bonn and has a accompanying exhibits catalog that we have. And I am supposed to send over to Dan, but you know, this is pre-COVID. So it's it's been taking a while to kind of get all my get my act together. So eventually you will get the catalog then so but uh, how are you good for it and uh, i have i i will share with everyone else the photographs <laughs> i took photographs of both the helmet and the oh, sun good, good good so yeah later on i'll share with oh, everyone else, so. later? okay yep. yeah um so i think it's uh, easier that way sure yeah um 
And then the thing I want to say about this photo that I love so much, which is my jumping off point to talking about the theater is Harvey's finger is directly over this photo of Divine in a Tama Horgan show. Yes, that was the one. I didn't notice benefits that. Or La Mama and Tom and his, his personal assistant, Mark, sent this to Harvey immediately just because they were so excited about having Divine in the show. But the best part is the dog in the picture. Okay, Lee, yeah. yeah the <laughs> that is Harvey's first dog, Trick. And, um, you know, when he moved to San Francisco, he uh, his partner, previous partner to Scott Smith, Galen McKinley, inherited Trick. And so Trick lived with Galen. And uh, that's and Galen was a stage manager at La Mama. So um, that's how this all happened. And this photo is by Mark Cohen, who was Tom's assistant. And I've been in touch with Mark this week over the excitement of uh, showing this and finding a good copy on the, the La Mama's archive uh, website. So I want to acknowledge them. Um, and, uh, and then I, you know, had a feeling because the dog was in it. I said, "Is did you take that photo? And he said, yeah, I did. So it's nice to finally <laughs> join the, the photo with the photographer. So um, this was in so, Ellen Stewart's private so collection. Dan, did you ever get the chance to meet Divine? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I met Divine uh, when they were here doing um, Neon Women, I think, or Women Behind Bars. Oh, that's amazing. Neon Women, yeah, yeah. That must have been an amazing time, just you know, having to have all these personalities come into the shop, and you know, never expecting who these people might be, and then all of a sudden, you know, forty years forward, you kind of see these amazing photographs. To me, is like you just get blown away. Well, I was, you know, I certainly was in awe of Divine, and and it was nice to finally meet because we did have Galen McKinley in common, and uh, and actually. Uh, Tom and Divine and Galen came to Harvey's memorial <clears throat> at the Opera House. Mm -hmm. They flew here for that. And uh, and I know Tom and, and Divi were, got very close over time. And uh, Tom and Galen stayed and we all went out on a, sh a boat to scatter Harvey's ashes to sea. And, <clears throat> and I met Galen for the first time, but I had heard about him for years and I'll talk more about that in a little bit, but um, right. let's see what else I got on this. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just that, you know, that was my special friendship with Harvey is even though there was politics uh, in the mix, you know, we'd have these slow times during the afternoon in the camera store and, he was very fond of telling stories. And so he knew I loved theater and that those were the stories I heard. Um, so we could do the next slide. And this is uh, Harvey and a very young Galen when they first met. Um, this is from the James C. Hormel collection of the Harvey Milk Scott Smith's papers. And uh, it's just a little tiny snapshot that I did a copy slide of way back when, when I first started doing presentations about Harvey. Um, I did go back to New York in 1979 and hung out with those guys quite a bit. And so it was really nice to have some quality time with Galen before he passed away. Um, you could, could do the next slide, Lee. And this is, this is what Galen looked like during the hair era. And he was- It's cool. Yeah, it is so very cool. good man. Yeah. yeah I don't think people I don't think people were aware of Harvey Milk's partners until Scott Smith. So Galen was the second part, part No, he he's actually I think he's the third. Um by the way this photo is by Harvey and that was one of his great joys. I mean, I think in a way photography was uh an outlet for him uh to diffuse the you know the the fear of politics and mm -hmm. he he would still uh, almost through his point of getting election elected he would go on these road trips with his boyfriends and take portraits of them and so this is sort of earlier in that tradition of doing the you know the sexy portrait of the boyfriend and um 
Uh, yeah, so the, I think that it starts with John Harvey, who was he was romantically involved with just out, out of the military, and then it goes to uh, um, the gentleman I talked about earlier, whose name always sticks in my, uh, you know, the, um, the militant activist. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, um, I can't oh believe God, that escapes me. His name. Uh, anyway, that guy, and then, um, uh, then came Joe Campbell, who was sort of a, a very fascinating person because he was on the sort of Warhol scene a little bit. He's mm -hmm. actually thought about in the song, um, uh, Walk on the Wild Side. He was called Sugar Plum on the scene. And, and then Galen. So that's what, one, two, three. Galen's the fourth. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then Galen comes to San Francisco with Harvey on Harvey's first trip to San Francisco with the production company of Hair. And then they kind of break up and then Galen goes back to New York and Harvey then decides to go back to New York to get ready to move to San Francisco. And that's when he meets Scott Smith. Um, so now I think the next slide. Oh, and here is a poster from the, the Tom O'Horgan piece at Le Mans. Oh, yes. yeah, it's April of 75. Spring right. Everybody's, you know, all of the, the people that were in hair and, uh, you know, many, many of who I got to meet when we scattered uh, Tom's ashes out to sea on the West Coast because he wanted to be scattered where Harvey was. I can't uh, emphasize enough how close the men were. They, they really were <clears throat> kind of soulmates and certainly best friends. And uh, Harvey continued to correspond with Tom all throughout his, his journey, his adventures. Next slide. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, in fact, here, Tom made a rare appearance in San Francisco. It's my first time meeting the legendary Tom O'Horgan. And Scott took this photo, but I was there that day. And that's Frank Robinson, who, for those that don't know, was really kind of Harvey's ghostwriter. And he edited a lot of Harvey's texts. And he co-wrote the Hope Speech. And he's also a very prominent personality in Harvey's you know, pantheon of people who he mm -hmm. relied upon. And so to have these three men together in a photo is just very special to me. And, uh, you know, of course, they got they got along famously. So that was great. You know. These are amazing photographs, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, I love this one. All right, I think we're ready for the next one. Okay, so we're going to jump ahead a little bit to... This is the volunteers for uh, a group that Scott and I um, uh, put together to organize Harvey's papers and catalog uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the personnel uh, who were in the photos. And uh, we called ourselves the Harvey Milk Archives. And we lasted a couple years. You know, we published three newspapers and uh, we um, didn't really have the stomach for you know, all the administrative stuff for the nonprofit world. So it, it finally fizzled out. But this was a really stalwart group. And, and two of the founders of the GLBT Historical Society were mm -hmm. instrumental in this. And that would be Terry Henderling, who we mm -hmm. just lost this year, as well as Jim Gordon, who's still with us. Mm -hmm. And there's Denton Smith uh, on the immediate left, who was also uh, Tom Yours lover. And... Uh, Denton and Harvey were very close, are very close. Denton is still with us. And that's Scott Smith on the far right. And, and then David Wagner was one of the founders of the Gay Film Festival along with me and 15 other people. And uh, we got Dave, we loved David so much. He would come and visit the store. So we hired him to work with me. And because uh, as the campaigns geared up, um, it got pretty hectic. So, you know, even me as an extra personnel was not enough. And then the late David Pasco, um, and the gentleman in the back was his, a close friend of Scott's, but he wasn't part of our group. He was just kind of hanging out. So was this taken in the his old apartment on, on, in the Castro? 
This is this this is the posthumous apartment. This is Scott's apartment on Seventeenth in the Castro. Okay, okay. not the that, one where HRC was. No, no. There, there's a complex configuration of where, who lived where and when. I'm not going to go into it for this. No, program. that's fine. I was just but wondering. Cause there's the there's the table. You recognize the table? We inherited the dining table, and I was yeah. interested to find out if that's the same dining table we have in the collection. It is. Yeah. Oh, it is. So we do have yeah. that table. That is the table. Yeah. Perfect. We had many of many a Thanksgiving meal around the table. I tell you. Yeah, we had that on exhibit in the old space when we first opened, I think, our little exhibit space in the old um, Historical Society address on Mission Street before we moved to the current the current mm -hmm. um, space we are at now. So, yes, we do have that dining table in the collection. Yeah, and it's you've, had, it, pretty you've cool. had the dining table on display at the Castro uh, location. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yes, we did yes, too. It's wonderful 60s. It's very gaudy. I mean, Harvey's, Harvey's home furnishings were very gaudy. You know, it's kind of <laughs> harkens back to his Wall Street days, I think. You know, when you could almost picture uh, some of the stuff being in uh, a scene from The Boys in the Band. Exactly. <laughs> That's perfect. Next slide. And, uh, oh. and you know, uh, this is Scott's mom, Elva Smith, and she mm -hmm. she and I became close friends over the years because she would come and visit him every year. And uh, this photograph is by um, Harley Shapiro. And uh, I don't think I have the date on it, um, but uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Scott died in on February 4th, 1995, and then his mom died on June 17, 2010. So that gives you. Wow, that's idea. amazing. And um, so, and he died in testate. So really mm -hmm. uh, his connection as the executor of Harvey's estate and it went to her and because she was, family and she knew uh, his gay friends, you know, she saw fit to follow through on his wishes and even though they weren't written. So eventually the papers and the photographs went to the Hormel and then mm -hmm. the camera went to you guys. Yeah, and the objects came to us. Yeah, uh, much later because she was kind of, you know, yeah. Alva was great. She, she really got it, but on the other hand, she would much prefer to talk about textiles or gardening. And so it was a whole process. <laughs> I, I understand completely. My love yes, and I drove her up to Oregon once and we had such a great time with her. And uh, yeah, we we got her over to back to San Francisco after Scott died for the unveiling of the Harvey Milk statue at City Hall. And she was a great gal. Uh, I great. miss her a lot. Um, I do, I also want to just give a nod of acknowledgement to all of Harvey's biological family. You know, Stuart Milk and his mom have been mm -hmm. terrific and uh, very invested <clears throat> right from the get-go. I mean, I met Stuart, you know, probably in the mid-90s, and we've constantly compared notes and, you know, made sure that both families are just kind of, you know, in touch with what's going mm -hmm. on and he's tireless in, in what he does do in on the international scene and um and then also um harvey had a wonderful cousin uh his name's michael salem and uh, he has a great story because him uh, joe campbell and harvey lived with him for a while and michael's business was flourishing because he dealt in lingerie and uh, items like that. And his client base was drag queens. So I thought that was kind of a unique dimension. <laughs> of That's, great. That's great. Yeah. And so I think uh, the next slide. Oh, yeah, this, so, yeah. Yeah. This so we, familiar. <laughs> we jump ahead to uh, this exhibit is August of 2003. It is mm -hmm. your first dedicated gallery. It's connected to the administrative offices of the GLBT uh, on Mission Street. Your Mission, yes, Street. Okay. Mission Street address. Yeah. And Susan was 
Um, Executive director at that time. And that was the time I did the, we did the installation of the, the suit that he got shot in. And it was right. in a, right. and we called it St. Harvey's. And, you know, I had mentioned that the Archdiocese of San Francisco was upset and sent us, you know, obnoxious. They called us, they sent us oh, letters sorry. because we had called Harvey Milk a saint. And that was <laughs> the exhibit title was St. Harvey. And yes. they, they were really upset about it. And yeah. I figured, you know what, good, it, you know, that's the best publication advertisement for an exhibit. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. If the Catholic Church is up against, you know, our St. Harvey, then it was good news. <laughs> it was, that was best advertising ever. This was a beautiful exhibit, and it really was sort of the first. I mean, I, I was the inaugural exhibit at the other location, which didn't have a dedicated gallery, me and Kathy Cade. And mm -hmm. it was very beautifully done as well. But this was really the first very sort of gallery savvy exhibition. And it ran for quite a few months, I think. Yep. Yeah, and, and we still there. have all those artifacts in the collection. Yeah. The old, yeah. the old campaign posters, that big blue wooden sign that says Harvey Milk for Assembly. Yeah. Which he didn't he didn't win that the election, did he? No, the no. That, that was the third of four. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And there's the dining table. There's the Pardon. table, yeah. It, I mean everything that Elva gave was in this we show. We still have. Yes, we do have. And there's a there's a ton more. And I was I really am hoping that in the in the in the future we could at least have another larger exhibition of all the the personal memorabilia we have in the collection, because we have at least about 15, you know, acid-free collection boxes of nothing but Harvey Milk and Scott Smiths. And just to just to add to the conversation is we recently, and it still is on exhibit, is Harvey Milk's uh, 501 jeans and his campaign t-shirt that we loaned to the Contemporary Jewish Museum that is mm -hmm. on exhibit at the moment. They're reopening, I think, this month. Mm -hmm. And it's an exhibition on Levi Strauss, the history of mm -hmm. you know, Levi Strauss in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And the my colleague at the CJM, who is also the museum registrar, had, you know, we were talking about it. And I said, well, you know, we do have Harvey Milk's blue jeans and his campaign t-shirt. And he <laughs> says, Well, can we can we you know, can we arrange a loan agreement on that? I said, by all means. Yeah. And then we sent another um, object, which was also made out of denim, which was a couture gown that was designed by, um, oh, name escapes me, but. Oh, um, I know, I know which one you're talking about. Yes. Um, the Mr. Mr. What is it? I'm Mr. sorry. What was it? Mr. David or no? Yeah, Dave. Yeah, Mr. David. So yeah, yeah. that's all an exhibit at CJM with a few other. That exhibit is something you know. I would I would ask people to go see because it's it's very unique to San Francisco when you talk about Levi Strauss and that whole history on blue jeans, basically. Yeah. It started like you know in the gold rush, I think, if I remember correctly. But anyway, okay, moving on. <laughs> sorry. No, that, I mean, you know, it, this is sort of a good place to move into more free for all because this is my last slide. Okay. Uh, and and uh, I, can, I can show, I can do my show and tell on my slides. Yes, great. So I think we can start with mine, Lee. Let's start with our guest, our, our guest photograph. Oh, that's right, because you have all your, your. I still have my show and tell slides then. Yes. There you go. Here is Daniel <laughs> Nicoletta at the camera shop when he was, I figure, what, 19? Uh, yeah. yeah 19, 19 and yeah. a half. Yeah. And this is in his book. And I'm going to do a plug because I have his book. <laughs> and you can see this book. And it says, Faggots are fantastic. So if you haven't seen this book yet, I would suggest you at least thumb through it or at least purchase it for your collection because it has amazing photographs in this book and it is a thick book. 
oops, I can't get that into this into the screen, but it is an amazing book. All right, next slide, Lee, please. So here is the famous Milky the Cow, and there's a story behind this because uh, I had no idea what this was when I first saw it. So um, Milky the Marvelous Milking Cow, as he is formally known, was donated to the society, and I didn't know this. It came with the Harvey Milk collection, but it was separated from the collection, and I had no idea why we had this toy. So this was sometime in, I think, the early 2000s, but and had no information about it. So when I first came across the box, I kind of scratched my head and I said, you know, this is, why do we have this ridiculous, ridiculous mechanical toy cow? And I did my homework. It was produced by Kenner in 1977 to promote General Mills breakfast cereals. So you fill you fill the cow, it's a toy cow that is relatively large. It's about at least a foot, a foot wide. And uh, you fill it with water and it is actually milkable. If you pull the udders of the cow and it even moves when you put the battery in. So it really is a very interesting sort of weird sort of thing to have in a collection. And I just kind of said, okay, we'll leave it in there and we'll not worry about it. So... But this is, it, it's one of those experiences at the, at, at the historical society when you come across these things and you kind of go, you know, this is what I think I enjoy so much about my job is because you go through this and you kind of go, what the hell is this doing here? You know, I've worked with traditional collections where, you know, the most exciting I've worked with objects I've worked with or artifacts would be like shrunken heads that are from, you know, South America, pre-Columbian, you know, a few bones here and there, skulls and that kind of thing. But, you know, when you come across things like this, you kind of go, wow, this is this is really interesting. So six months for, well, six months after, I was thumbing through photographs. And this was actually your suggestion, Dan, was to look into Efren Ramirez's collection of photographs, who I know you knew. He is he's the late... He's passed. He's passed on now. I think he left. He left San Francisco and moved to New Mexico. I think, but Colorado, he has Colorado. Oh, Colorado. Colorado Springs, yeah. And he, you know, he 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 left us uh, an amazing collection of photographs, which also included photographs of Harvey Milk. So I was several months later. I was thumbing through his photographs, and then I came across um, a photograph, and. Lee, would you mind showing that photograph of, there you go. Here's Harvey Milk with the judge Marie Victoire, who apparently swore him to office that. So I guess she swore Harvey Milk and Mayor Moscone into office when they when he won as a supervisor, right? Um, yes. Uh, well, you know, they, they wanted to do a swearing in on the outside steps of the city hall, so everybody could attend uh, and, and there would be one later in the day inside the board chambers. Uh, so, so this they, was probably on the steps. That's the one on the steps and they, and you know, Ali Marie Victoire was a friend of the gay community. So uh, Bob Ross was a big champion of her, uh, her election. And um, so she was very happy to do that. And it was a wonderful moment. And so this is the funny, this is my eureka moment where you kind of go, I don't believe this. I see the photograph, I see the cow, and it's all connected. You know what I mean? It's one of those, you know, you never realize, you know, you the, the Historical Society's collection of art and artifacts were one of those amazing collections, but were never really used because they were never exhibited, you know, because... You know, we rarely exhibit objects unless, you know, they were part of a collection and that sort of thing. So just recently, this is pre-COVID, with that grant we got from the city, you know, we started to inventory these 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 objects. And it was just about, a little, this one was a little earlier, but the rest the rest was really interesting because it's like an archaeological site. You know, you, you try to piece things as you come across them because there's going to be, you know, paintings and a lot of artwork and you do all the homework about who the artist is. And it's interesting because, you know, 
we have a lot, you know, 80s, 80s paintings, gay, gay artists always had some naked man and, you know, that sort of thing. And that's the genre of, of paintings during that time. And it's, it's really quite interesting. Um, so just to inform you of what we have in the Milk Collection, we have, as I mentioned, over 15 acid-free collection boxes of Harvey Milk's memorabilia. And um, eventually we would like to have that all in an exhibit. So Lee, we could start with the set of slides I have on for everyone to see. Oh, here is the telephone. I think that was in his camera shop, Dan. Do you remember this one? I, I sort of do. Um, I know there was one on the wall up front at the front counter. Yeah, uh, I think we have that too, but I figured this was cool because- This is I, probably the one on, on his desk in the back. Exactly. And so what it was, was I, I, I also sent this to Germany because the German curators came a year before this exhibit in Bonn, you know, a year and a half ago, pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. And they actually chose a number of, of objects from that collection to feature in, in the exhibit about San Francisco and the gay movement and the, and the queer movement in San Francisco during that time. So this is one of the objects I sent to Germany along with your photograph with the helmet and the sunglasses. So it was like the perfect, you know, combination of artifacts, you know, that, that you would see in a, in, in a, in a, in an exhibit. And then says the label on the phone reads, your life will be happy and peaceful. And that's, that's, that's amazing. So um, Lee next. And then here's the helmet. And I think the next one, so that lights up. I, I haven't put the batteries on this, so it might still light up. <laughs> and then it makes, doesn't it make sound, Dan? Well, it, it's so, the rotating of the light causes this real sort of weird grinding sound. I don't grinding think it was sound. that meant to make sound, but it's kind of this hideous sound comes <laughs> well, One of these days we might have to put a battery in there to try it out. Yeah. So the next slide I think are the sunglasses. There you go. And they're, you know, it's interesting because they're like women's legs with high heels on there. And I think there's another photograph with it on the side. There you go. See the side. And it, it's really a funny, it's a really funny pair of sunglasses. And then that, the ne well, the next one is a pen he used in signing a, it says, um, signed a proposition against, um, discrimination against gay and lesbians. So that must have been, you know, when he already had started doing propositions in City Hall. Well, this so was, was or, uh, or, this I'm was sorry, called, ordinance. Yeah, you know that photo that Efren took of the signing uh, of oh, you're right. George and, and Harvey, this was the pen that was used uh, because they couldn't find a, leather, a lavender pen that day. So they figured they were just photogenic. So, so I this, love these little stories about these artifacts. I'm going to have yeah. to take notes for all of these. <laughs> so I think the next one might be, oh, here we go. So this is just a series of campaign posters we have in the collection. This one, the next one. This is the first one, I think, because if you notice in the photograph, he still has his ponytail. Mm -hmm. So we do have his ponytail, but I didn't think I needed to take a photograph of that. So he did cut his hair after this election campaign. Mm -hmm. And then this was one when, when he ran for assembly. And then, and then of course the Harvey milk pins, you know, mm -hmm. campaign pins. And of course the, the no on six, which he got it all started. And then I think that might be, oh, and here's the blue jean, the 501 jeans mm -hmm. and the campaign t-shirt, we, it, which is currently on loan at the Contemporary Jewish Museum here in San Francisco. And then and that might be it. Is that it, Lee? I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go back to that one. So this is unfortunate, but very poignant sort of part of the collection. When, when Harvey Milk got assassinated, um, they discovered letters in his suit pocket. And these are, the little holes are actually bullet ridden. So this was an envelope found 
was written out to George that was inviting him to uh, go with, to kind of, he was inviting George, and I'm not sure if this is George Moscone or another George, because there's no last name on the envelope, on the, on the front of the envelope. And it says, join me for an evening at the San Francisco Symphony that I love. So he really, you know, liked, you know, music and theater. And it says, is that right? I can't read. Yeah, Saturday yeah, Symphony, something, my true love. Saturday Symphony, and it's signed Harvey. And, and those are actually bullet holes in that letter. I yeah. had loaned, the, the, there are two letters. There's another one in the collection. And that one I had loaned about a couple of years ago to the museum in Washington, D.C., they had an exhibit on the the gay movement that was specific to the West Coast, the East Coast, I'm sorry, Stonewall and that sort of thing. But they, because, you know, San Francisco was fairly ground zero as much as Stonewall was, they requested for this, not this one, but the other letter if they for, for an exhibition in DC. So I sent that one. And um, yeah, this is, this is one of the most precious letters artifacts we have in our collection. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, oh, and well, Dan, I thought maybe I should, you know, have you talk about this amazing installation. Mm -hmm. You know, if everyone, if, if, if no, if, if, uh, if any of, of you have not realized that the San Francisco Terminal 2 is now named the, the Harvey Milk Terminal, right, Daniel? Uh, I don't know what it was, which, which number it originally had. Yeah, I think it's Terminal 2, and it's called the Harvey Milk Terminal. Yeah, it's Harvey so, Milk Terminal now. So you want to talk about this installation we, we worked on? <laughs> uh, well, I just want to just interject that the that is definitely a letter to George Moscone. So the oh, was it George Moscone yeah. then? Yeah. No, that's good to know. It's good to know that. We yeah. have we have that reference now. Yeah, that was in, a, in his pocket the day he was killed. He, and, uh, yeah. he was going to be giving it to George. So yeah, um, so that's really unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, zoom forward to just uh, we were in, in February. We're going to uh, have a reception for the permanent exhibition at the Harvey Milk Terminal. Uh, Ramon and I have been working intimately with the San Francisco Museum. We have two brilliant curators doing all of this hard, hard trench work, uh, Tim O'Brien and Kai Kammerer. And they've been incredible. They've been treating me, you know, the best I've been treated in my profession the whole time I've been doing all this stuff. And, uh, and this was the temporary exhibit, which was up for uh, a, uh, about a year, let's just say. And uh, and then yeah. it was going to come down and then a permanent exhibit, which was half as big, was installed in the receiving division of the terminal. Yeah, pre-security. Pre-security. Pre right. uh, so everybody can see that at any time. And it's in a, it's a very elegant, it, they call it an ingle nook. It's a very petite gallery, yeah. but it's just, it's like this, lovely sitting room where you can just go and look at the catalog which is there for free and um it's just really beautiful and and then subsequent to that city hall got involved because they they didn't think there was enough visibility for who the, mm -hmm. the person was being named the airport was being named after and so they said what you know why didn't you take those panels from the phase one and mm -hmm disperse them throughout the um, the airport. And so that went to the drawing board and it was approved. And so basically just as we speak, mm -hmm. uh, all of those panels, which was almost like a city block long. Yeah, it's 400, I was told it was about 400 feet. Yeah, it was just space. so impressive. And uh, I hated to yes. see it come down, but that is a construction wall. And yep. But now it's gonna be permanently installed in five different sections at the airport. The, um, unfortunately, this is post security, but it'll be yeah. in the uh, reception area for customs. So people yeah. coming in through customs will learn about Harvey Milk. 
Yeah, and because yeah, because the terminal is named after him, I think it's a great. I think it's an amazing tribute, and these yeah. panels are 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 put on these images, of which, of course, Dan Dan's photographs are included in this in this exhibition, along with, you know, most of the the campaign posters I had showed everyone else, you know, earlier earlier, you know, and a few other photographs that either came from the public. San Francisco Public Library and the Hormel collection, along with the Historical Society's collection, I think kind of draws a lot of that sort of, you know, amazing display of, of images and, and text on the wall. So yes, this was a really an amazing project. They're, they're on aluminum back, their photographs are on aluminum backing i think is what it is so it really is it, it, it's an amazing installation and i wish everyone has has a chance to at least see parts of it as you if you use the terminal two um terminal two at the air at the san francisco airport you will probably see parts of this installation in the post security area right uh, You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the plan. No, well, this is this. Oh, well, this is well. This will be in the uh, customs corridor. Yeah. You're right. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, it for photographs. Unless you were traveling internationally, you would not be able to see this anymore. But yeah. you would be able to see the Engelnick. You would be able to see permanent. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be two outside sculptural installations uh, unveiled in about two years. So this has been a very big ongoing project commissioning many artists and uh, photographers and yep it's, it's been great and so i think we're we're i think we're good on that lee i think you know yeah. i think that's the last set of photographs questions questions from anyone i think i'm gonna go lots of comments thank you all for san francisco terminal is it what yeah, I just, so I just wanted to invite everyone uh, who's tuning in to put any comments, questions that you'd like in the chat. We have about, we have enough, uh, we have we have 30 minutes left to spend with each other. So we have plenty of time to get to folks' questions. Um, so please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll just kind of hang out and have a, you know, casual conversation. You two Perfect. can talk, talk about the, objects and you know some of your favorite things about what you've been doing together knowing you know each other for what was it 30 30 years you said you've known each other 20 years You're something right. like yeah, that there's a question from 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 il mcdonald to danny could you discuss how scotty and harvey encourage your photography and love of the arts love ian and rob uh, hi guys i miss you <laughs> Um, Ian is one of those the major Harvey Milk groupies that I know, and uh, so much so that he loves coming to San Francisco and helping me with whatever I'm, I'm up to. Uh, and uh, it's been a couple of years. Um, so uh, yeah, and also a wonderful <laughs> photographer. Uh, Ian's photographed the Queen of England quite beautifully. Um, so. How did they encourage me? Well, you know, they, they, Harvey was trained as a teacher, so he was a natural mentor. And, uh, you know, so long as you always let him be right, you were good to go. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and I was, I got, <laughs> I got very good at that. Uh, so, but I was a still photographer as well as a filmmaker. And they actually came to my first debut, uh, which, was eventually what became known as the first gay film festival so and uh um but it was great to have your bosses of your day job come to you <laughs> and it was this it's quite a scene and my my splices kept on breaking so the next day when i got to work harvey had taken a a placard of codex splicing tapes that were almost run out and he wrote in big black magic marker break a splice you know so I have that still. That's my little treasure with his signature on it. Um, but anyway, they were great. And they, yeah, I mean, I was constantly late because I was working on this show or that show. And they finally just sat me down and were like, dude, we want you to do what you're doing, but you cannot be late. <laughs> so I hope there you go. 
I, I stand corrected. Barry Lawrence makes a comment, and it says San Francisco Terminal One. I guess is is the Harvey Milk Terminal. So, okay, I, 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 numbers one one or two, but it is one, I guess. Uh, okay. Charlie Beal, of course, you know. And thank you, Charlie, for joining us. Charlie Beal is the president of the Gilbert Baker Foundation out of New York, and so we do have a. The relationship in terms of the donation from the Gilbert Baker estate was course to Charlie Beal and the foundation. And I'd like to recognize that. Thank you, Charlie. But Charlie has a question. It says, how did Danny and Ramon meet? And I, you know, to answer that question, Charlie, um, it was just my first, you know, when I first started working for the Historical Society, and that was when, you know, I mentioned Susan Stryker was still executive director in the 90s, um, we already had started to cross paths. I mean, just because Danny was the photographer and I was the sort of young graduate student, you know, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I got invited to do that Harvey Milk installation. And I think that's when we first started to kind of, you know, meet and exchange stories. And I was excited about his work. And so that's how we met. Um, I want to add uh, just a little quip to that. You know, I, I have this great story that I, I just cherish to this day because, you know, I mean, you're when you're working together, you're all doing stuff. And so, you know, as you know, as an art director, um, <clears throat> you know, you don't necessarily get to hang out. But I inadvertently invited myself to uh, a, a holiday party for the volunteer force of the GLBT Historical Society, which was quite impressive, but they, they <laughs> at that time anyway, they threw them an annual party. And I got my signals crossed and I thought, you know, other people could go. <laughs> and they, were quite, go. We they, quite, go, they were quite horrified that this, you know, this lay person who's not a volunteer showed up to <laughs> Never I don't on. think it was. I don't think it was an issue. I mean, showing no, up no, the no, party. No, was then everybody weird. was like, "Oh my God, Danny's here!" And it was really cool. And, and but I got to meet uh, Ramon and his partner Jeff, who I already had become aware of. They, if if you were seeing uh, uh, an exhibition with extraordinarily stylish and elegant branding, well, thank you. Oh, thank you. Guys, we're, we're making that happen. And so that was, that was, a, that was the hot, you know, that's the advantage <clears throat> of marrying a husband who was a graphic artist <laughs> and a designer. He makes it look so pretty. So no, no, they, it's, still, so it's still their story. I mean, you know, there's, and there's John Rain and there's, there, you know, Everyone that's else. an institution where you have five people doing the job of 20. And, and the people that come to the table are incredibly, you know, what's the word, stalwart. Um, exactly. <laughs> they, they, they're the real deal, so I cannot praise those guys enough. And then a uh, question from Barry Lawrence, Danny. How was it working with, how was, how was it working on Gus Van Sant's film? Uh, well, I, I like to characterize it as 10 of the best weeks of my life, you know, because, um, you know, I, I knew Gus before and we had done a little something together. I think he was filming a thing here and I got to go to take stills on set, which was really cool. And I, I always adored him. And, and uh, oh, we never knew till really at the 11th hour what my role would be, even though I had been researched. You know, I was a research subject for Lance and all of that. Um, but then magic started to happen and People wanted me there on set, you know, just to kind of hang out and be a consultant. But also I wanted to take stills and, and did get to do that. And so it was a really magical time. And uh, um, and then and then it, in 10 weeks, it was it was you know, the carnival left town and uh, it was over. So, you know, there was postpartum and all of that. But it was really, you know, it's still a, a force in my life. That movie has had such reach and has such gravity with people that uh, there isn't a day go by that I'm not still somehow connected to that project. I was, I was a little starstruck when Gus Van Sant came to the, to the Historical Society's mission address, looking at the Harvey Milk 
collection, you know, the dining table and whatever else. And he said, well, we'd like to borrow that. And we had said, <laughs> I am so sorry, but you won't be able to borrow it for a film. You can build, you know, like yeah. Yeah. replicas of, of, of the objects, but we don't normally loan objects to Hollywood. But he was very nice about it. And he, he did give us a generous donation, so we didn't complain too much. No, I mean, film crews are notorious for, um, you know, uh, being rough on things. But, uh, you know, <laughs> one, one of the great things that came out of that was, you know, Harvey had the, ha, ha, I just, I'm doing a new series now of still lifes that are LGBT iconographic things. And one of the things that I inherited from Scott was a, um, they call them a knock them down doll. And it was from the Santa Monica Pier uh, when the fire burnt it down the, the last mm -hmm. time, it finally just was. But that was the time when Scott and Harvey were touring the coast before they had to settle down and get real and their unemployment check was run out. But <laughs> so they were walking down the beach together. This is how the story goes anyway. And popping out of the sand is one of these knock them down carnival dolls. And, and so they kept it as uh, an ornament for their home. And then when, Harvey passed, I was like, Scott, if there's anything I want, it's that carnival doll because I come from carnival background. So he said, yeah, yeah, of course. So I have this carnival doll, but then the, the movie wanted to put it as a decorative element in Harvey's apartment. And, but the thing was falling apart at the bottom, a little bit of straw was coming out and it had singe marks and stuff. So they were real skittish about <laughs> actually using the, I was like, take it, do it, do it. And they're like, no, no, we're actually going to fabricate it. So then Gilbert was charged, who was doing props uh, for the film. He was charged with fa fabricating that to the letter. And then when the film was done, he gave me the fabrication. So now I have both of them. And that is great. That's, real that's great. Mm -hmm. So I have a few more questions from, our, our, our listeners. So Eli Kather says, did you study photography anywhere? I am studying art in San Francisco at the moment. Uh, hi, Eli. Yes, I, I um, have a bachelor's of uh, art with an emphasis in photography. It's from San Francisco State. Um, and I had a year at Kansas City Art Institute prior to that, and then a year at CCA in Oakland. And then George Roberti mentions, hi, Dan, remembering our meetup in New York and all of the San Francisco memories, too. Yes. Thank you, George. Thanks for coming. Um, you know, when I debuted the book in, uh, in New York City, uh, George came all the way from Boston for my events, and that was really cool. And we, we go way back. We're very connected to the early Castro history. And then John Johnston says, do you have any stories about Harvey and Jose Saria interaction? There is a famous photo of them together with Jose in my fair lady outfit. Are you familiar yeah, with that yeah. one? I think you're, I, I think the photo you're thinking of was their third person. Uh, Mavis was uh, with them and they're on stage and they're all holding hands and uh, they're very joyous. And that I took that Good photo. Thing. Oh, yeah. it did. Oh, great. Yeah. And, and then, uh, it's a great moment because they Harvey had just been elected and the imperial court system was out of control, thunderous of, in appreciation. And uh, I'll just never forget that moment. It's like Bill Graham's civic auditorium was like, it was almost like it was trembling from the, the amount of applause. And then Charlie, Charlie Beale says, Danny, you were key to helping in the film, which is the milk film, right? Yeah, I think that's what he meant. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Charlie was uh, art director. All of the art direction is Charlie's work. And uh, yeah. we did an amazing job recreating that era. And then Gerard says, and the GLBT Historical Society collection includes the My Fairly, Fairly Ascot Reyes. Yes, we do have. Jose Saria's collection wow. of outfits along with all the papers. So that's another collection yeah. I think people should yeah. come yeah. see or set an appointment for with our archivists. So 
No, thank you so much. I mean, you know, this is such a fun evening. Deborah says, is there any talk of rescheduling the official opening at SFO? Unfortunately, I don't think there's that's going to happen, the reopening of the exhibition at SFO. The permanent the permanent exhibit is now on is, is all set up. So as you go to the San Francisco airport, you could see that permanent collection, uh, permanent exhibit in the pre-departure area, right? Yes. Yeah, there's no, uh, no events planned to my knowledge, but there that was good. That thing that I was there for in uh, March was a soft opening of the uh, Ingle Nook, the small of gallery. The, of, the, of the smaller gallery. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then they do have these two uh, installations on the outside of the building, uh, and that could conceivably end up with something, some you know sort of fanfare. Um, but that's 2022 is the reveal on that, so we're we're a ways from knowing but what's going to happen. I think, yeah. I think you know they, it, it these guys. They really rose to the occasion to accommodate the community for that. Yep. What was to be a really lovely soft opening, but it, it really was it was difficult. It was a difficult uh, um, venture because you know, of course, our community is huge, so yeah. they, they didn't know what they were bargaining for. <laughs> yep, and, and it opened. It was scheduled to open right when COVID hit, so it yeah. was it was such bad timing. But no, no, it would have been a super spreader event. I mean, that's what's scary. Exactly. So, Danny, there's one more question from Allison Brantley. It says, Danny, could you talk about some of the photographs you took on the night of Harvey's election in 77, I think? The energy is so great in those photos. How did you capture that night? Oh, gosh. Well, hi, Allison. Um, <laughs> and uh, speaking of history, Allison just released the uh, her um, epic book about the Coors Beer Boycott and interviewed our dearly beloved Alan Baird, um, who I'm still very, very much in touch with. And uh, we check in about once a week or so. Um, and uh, he was very excited about the, the book coming out. And I have it on my coffee table but I haven't looked look at it intimately yet but I'm super excited about that history and thank you for doing that um, and you know of course you know from Alan that was just such an extraordinary night uh, we all kind of have this big warmth in our heart for that um, I wasn't a great photographer um, but I did all right I think I shot two and a half three rolls and it was real crowded, so of course you had to kind of figure that one out. Um, but also, I was partying, so I I was still drinking. <laughs> so I think you know, it was it was everything and more. <laughs> well, you were what 20? 21? Uh, Not well, even. I, that's seventy seven. That's November of seventy seven, and I was born in fifty four. So I think I'm twenty one ish by then. There you go. <laughs> twenty one. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I think we're 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 set to it's you know we're we're pretty much that's it for the evening. We'd like to thank everyone, Lee. Of course, Hi. Lee. Without Lee, I would be what did they say? Fish out of water. I mean, <laughs> I'd be dead. I wouldn't know how to run this. <laughs> well, I have one. I have one last question for the both of you. You both have shown some really amazing photos and really amazing uh, items and artifacts in our collection. What are, if you had to choose, and I know it's probably like choosing children, if you had to choose what would be one of your favorite items or or in your case, Danny, uh, one of the favorite, you know, photo photographs that you've, you've taken that involve uh, Harvey and, and his life and foibles and joy. Thank you. That's a good question. Um, I, I I favor the one of Harvey at the sea dressed like a clown because nobody else took that photo. So that was like my very special gift from him. Uh, and that was taken on May 21st, 1977. Um, 
and he was doing a promo for the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus where they came to town and they did an editorial and they invited all these San Francisco celebrities to dress up like, like clowns. And of course he was a natural and he loved doing it. So he asked them if he could borrow the costume to go out to a fort, uh, Operation Concern was our mental health uh, nonprofit at the time. And he, he was gonna go to a benefit for them dressed as a clown. And, uh, and I was, I accompanied him that whole day taking pictures. And so we oh, went out to Fort Funston. Yeah. And that's a picture, uh, I think. Yeah. Earlier in the day uh, where the photo shoot was down by Embarcadero one. And then Harvey and I drove out to Fort Funston where I took that beautiful portrait of him. That's dressed great. Wow. Yeah. And it's, it's so unique. I mean, nobody else took that picture. So yes, the book. <laughs> yeah. If you want to see more amazing photographs, I think, this whole book that Danny had done in the last couple of years is just totally amazing. I mean, it's just, it really is amazing. So, well, same question. I, I think the most, the most of all the artifacts in that collection, I think the letter, the, the, the letters with bullet holes is such a reminder of how important this, this person was and how, you know, in terms of the movement in San Francisco, I think you know it. It really speaks. It really speaks to what he had done for the community, and it really is a touching little artifact that you will never forget when you see it. And actually, I I no uh, discussion of Harvey Milk is complete without a discussion of George Moscone. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. um, and you know he. Uh, he was such a champion of the LGBT civil rights journey uh, long before it was popular to do so. I mean, certainly he understood the gravity of our our gathering voting block power, um, but he really truly enjoyed it. He, I mean, he came to those drag balls and I can yeah. remember Harvey saying to me, did you see that? The mayor of a major American city just kissed the drag queen. <laughs> <You know? laughs> George was loving, you know, and uh, I even had a wonderful moment with him myself in City Hall one day where I was dropping off a print of either that event or something else, and uh, and I I had this little backpack that was really tightly tied, and I was going to drop it off his in his office, and I was walking through the halls of City Hall, and there he was with you know, his couple staff members. And mm -hmm. I said, hey, George, I have a photo for you. And he stopped and he was waiting for me to get, get it out of the bag so I could give him the photo. And the damn tie would not undo. It was like a very <laughs> tight knot. And do you know that that guy stood there the whole time and waited for me to get that knot undone? And I did <laughs> the photo. <laughs> That's and amazing. that's the kind of mayor he was, you know, yep. and uh, I got a very sweet letter, letter of thanks, of course. But um, yeah, that's great. That, those, that's amazing stories. <laughs> so, Lee, I think it's time to say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much to you, Ramon, for hosting oh, tonight. God. I'm I really, really that. excited to continue this series with you. I, I This came out, this this series came out of so many wonderful conversations that I've had with you. And, oh, you know, we, you. Started, we started talking and going, you know, why don't we just do a show and tell from the archives? So- yeah, We never uh, talk about, you know, we never talk about objects and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And all the exciting things we kind of work on and, you know, no, this is a great opportunity to share it with everyone. And I am looking forward to the next one, which is in the next quarter, which is probably. I, uh, I think, think we're doing it in August. August or September. It'll be August or September. Yeah. Don't but quote me on some, that. I'm not a math guy. Yeah. And um, then Dan, thank you so much. I mean, thank you so much. I, what a wonderful depth. first guest. <laughs> yes. And so I will close us out for this evening. Um, so everyone say goodbye to Ramon Thank and Dan. You. Thank you for joining Thank us. Um, so I'm just going to close this out really quickly by letting folks know about some of our other programs that we have coming up soon. Uh, so next week we have our uh, another installation of our monthly series, Queer Culture Club. We are talking with Natalia Vigil, who is a uh, 
the executive director of the Queer Cultural Center. And then on May 21st, we will be welcoming Jonathan Ned Katz to our programming to talk about his new, new book about Eve Adams. And it's uh, titled The Dangerous Life and the, the danger, the daring times, the daring life and dangerous times of Eve Adams. And then uh, next month in June, we'll be kicking off Pride Month with another in our uh, new series called Mighty Reels, where we're showing off uh, video footage from our collection. This time it'll be focused around pride footage that we have. So I thank everyone for coming tonight and I hope that we see you all soon at our next program. Thank you so much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.